Sports presents live from Jacksonville, Florida, the 39th annual Gator Bowl. Iowa against Florida. This ABC Sports exclusive is being sponsored by Chevrolet, official U.S. cars and trucks of the 14th Olympic Winter Games. Chevrolet and you taking charge. By Meisterbrow, a great beer at a great price. By Sharp Electronics Corporation, from sharp minds come sharp products. And by Mr. Goodwrench and General Motors Parts, who help you keep that great GM feeling with genuine GM parts. We're at the venerable old stadium, the Gator Bowl, on the banks of the St. John's River in Jacksonville, Florida. Big annual event in this town in the northeast part of the state. And again, they're sold out. More than 80,000 to look on as the Hawkeyes of Iowa take on the Gators of Florida, the Southeastern Conference against the Big Ten. Well, it was 24 degrees at the Sun Bowl last week. And it was 11 degrees at the Liberty Bowl last night, so I suppose it is downright tropical because it's 34 degrees in Jacksonville, Florida. But at least it is dry after a week of heavy rain as the Iowa Hawkins come out onto the turf of the Gator Bowl. There's the head coach, Hayden Fry, who's done a remarkable job. They finished with a record of 9-2. and two. They are only two losses were at the hands of the conference champion, Illinois. And they, of course, are playing in the Rose Bowl and to the conference runner-up, Michigan, which will be playing in the Sugar Bowl. So the Hawkeyes have come out onto the field and they have brought with them about 22,000 folks from the state of Iowa as the Gators now come in to the Gator Bowl. Gainesville is only 72 miles from Jacksonville, so they will be the crowd favorite tonight. 8-2-1. They didn't come that far away from a perfect year. Their two losses to Georgia and Auburn, and the tie against Southern Cal. SC tied them on the last play of the game. So a good year for the Gators of Florida. And hello again, everyone. Top coat and all. I'm Al Michaels welcoming you to Florida. This would have been a very improbable matchup just a few years ago because Florida was staggering along mediocre season after mediocre season. And Iowa, which had been to the Rose Bowl January 1st, 1959, subsequently went 23 years without appearing in another bowl game. In fact, had 19 non-winning years. But Charlie Pell took over at Florida in 79, had a winless first year, but turned it around in 80. And tonight they're playing in their fourth consecutive bowl game. Iowa, meanwhile, got things turned around under Hayden Fry. And tonight will be their third consecutive bowl appearance after they had been to bowls only twice in their entire history. My regular partner is Lee Grosskopf. He would have been here tonight, but he's recuperating, and we might say recuperating rather well from a recent stomach ailment. So in his stead, a man who is no stranger to you, Frank Broyles. And Frank, as you approach a bowl game as a coach, you have to approach it differently than the regular season. How do you see this one tonight? Well, we've got to remember that Iowa has not played a game in six weeks. Florida has only played one in seven weeks. And because of holidays and uh, Christmas, they've only had eight practices. And your running game suffers, so you rely primarily on your quarterback. That's a key. And Chuck Long of Iowa is an awfully good one. He's big and strong. He has that quick, accurate arm. He set 12 school records, and he'll throw from anywhere on the field. Then, of course, we have Wayne Peace from Florida, who's also an outstanding quarterback. Four brilliant years as a starter. Has seven records, NCAA, Southeastern Conference, or Florida. And he also will throw from anywhere on the field. Both extremely capable. Let's see a lot of points on the board tonight. Iowa comes in averaging 34 points a game. But if you are an aficionado of defense, got a couple of good linebackers tonight to look oh, at. Two great ones. And linebackers are the key to the heart of any defense. Larry Station of Iowa is outstanding. Just a sophomore. All conference. And... The Big Ten coaches feel he may be the best in America. And also we go to, to Wilbur Marshall, who's two-time All-American, the bell care for Florida. Should be a close one tonight as Iowa comes in ranked 10th in both polls. Florida ranked number 11. Florida a slight favorite, and we'll kick it off right after this. So the Gator Bowl is sold out. Some folks may elect not to show up tonight. It's uh, possible. Not those from Iowa. When you make the trip down from Iowa City and Cedar Rapids and 
the entire state. They've come down for their third consecutive bowl game, and uh, they're getting spoiled after years and years of never going to any postseason action. They went to the Rose Bowl two years ago, and then the Peach Bowl last year in Atlanta, and here are the folks from Iowa at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, and they're not complaining about the weather because, as they put it, when most of them left home, it was about 15 below. This is a sunny day for the people in Iowa and Arkansas and everywhere in the Midwest. It's been extremely cold. You're not going to get too much sympathy from most of the rest of the country. Gator Bowl where Florida leads Iowa by a score of 14 to 3 and the capacity crowd being entertained right now by the University of Florida Gator Band under the direction of Jeff Welch and featuring tonight music from the movie Shaft. opportunity to wish you a happy new year and of course those of us at ABC Sports eagerly anticipating 1984 will be in Sarajevo for coverage of the Winter Olympics in February and of course in Los Angeles beginning in late July for coverage of the Summer Olympic Games and also we'll begin our 23rd year of ABC's Wide World of Sports and here are some of the things you'll see on Wide World during the first quarter of 84. The halftime score as we come back to the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, the 39th annual Gator Bowl, is Florida 14, Iowa 3 in the matchup featuring teams from the Southeastern Conference and the Big Ten. And as far as the first half highlights were concerned, highlight number one, this interception by Tony Lilly of Florida. Tony Lilly is a gambler, and he takes a chance, breaking in front of Moritz, the receiver, and makes the interception. Just an outstanding play, a good return, although there was a clip on the return that moved Florida back. It sent him all the way back, but it was a long drive that was culminated when Anderson went in for the touchdown to wrap it up. Anderson has been very impressive. He's shown good quickness, been able to adjust his, his running room, and he makes a fine dive across for the first touchdown. Then after Iowa made the score 7-3 to three on a field goal by Nickel, here's Nickel again, who also serves as the punter, and this was the big play in the half. Well, Nickel just took his eye off the ball. It was a high snap. He should have first caught the ball. Since he did, he should have fallen on it, which would have been a safety instead of a touchdown. Doug Drew picks up the touchdown, so the score is 14-3. to Iowa has had a very, very potent offense, obviously averaging 34 points a game, but uh, they've had to lay off. They don't look very good offensively in the first half, so if you're Hayden Fry, what are you saying right now? Well, you're going to have to make some changes. I think his strategy of throwing the deep intermediate routes uh, has been ineffective. Florida defense is back there. They're going to have to go to shorter passes, catch the ball, and run with it until Florida linebackers come back up and play like they should. But Hayden has got to get his offense on track. Otherwise, his defense is going to play out there. Too long, be out too long, and the Florida offense will wear them down. So the second half, about ready to begin as the Gators come back out onto the field in Jacksonville. They lead 14-3. to 3. 